What are they asking you to do? Dusk inquired. It's just to supervise the event, which isn't hard all considering the snooze fest that this is turning out to be. Dawn answered. That doesn't seem too bad. How was your Thanksgiving? Dusk asked. It kind of sucked, but whatever. Dawn shrugged. Yeah, mine too. My parents just complained about me the whole time for not having the job, and the rest of my family pretty much just ignored me like they usually do. Dusk reported. My dad even called me out in front of the whole family, said I was a flipping burgers for a living. Can you believe that asshole? Tell me about it. Dawn rolled her eyes. My cousins were all talking about how their game prompted promoted up to their companies, and then there was me, who had a report that I'm just stalking books like a dumbass. I'm pretty sure all of them had a peak of professional life that was managing fast food restaurant. Dawn was of course exaggerating, but Dusk related a deep down level in Dawn's laminations. None of her family members besides Jacelyn had seemed to look at any potential whatsoever, which really did hurt. That sounds like my family. The only thanks I was getting yesterday was the f is when I got the hell out of there. Dot D Dusk hissed. Where are your folks placed the whole day? Most of it I left when my relatives did, which was around 6, Dawn said. Hey, I haven't told you yet, but I told Dayton about the park being shut down, and she had a great idea over our group should meet. Awesome. Do you want me to show you after the book signing? Dusk asked. Yeah, Dawn said, glancing over the book signing check in the process. Dusk did the same as it appeared to be wrapping up as a few old folks went up to get their book signed by Don John McDonald and chatted with him. It's about 10 minute drive from here. I think it's just about done. If these old fogies just want to hurry their asses up. Dusk was glad that she said that was quite enough that anyone could hear. Despite Dusk being the type of person who spoke her mind, she would never feel comfortable being up at that crass with their own workplace. What's up? A familiar voice greeted from behind. Dust spun around to see it was Dayton, who donned a brow top and blue jeans. Oh hey, you're just in time. I was just telling Dusk about the new mean spot, and she wants me to greet her there, Dawn informed. Yeah, nice idea. My great aunt's got a summer house there. It's kind of old-timey off the beaten path, but I think it'd be cool to have a place like that we could use for writing, Dayton suggested. Does she mind us in there? Dusk inquired. Oh god, no, Dayton assured. She never uses the place except in the summer, so she doesn't really care. The older people began to slowly head out of the bookstore, with the exception of one, who appeared deep down in the conversation with John McDonald. As the others headed out, a red-headed girl, girl, girls about their age came in, and a Donna buttoned-up shirt with a blue skirt. Oh, hey, it's Kaylee, Don observed. Hey, Kaylee, my shift's all done. I'm gonna head out. There's just one person left at the event. Got it. Thanks, Don, Kaylee appreciated. I don't know about you guys, but I walked here, Don said. Yeah, same here, Dayton nodded. I brought my car. We could drive it up to your aunt's place, Dusk offered. Awesome, Don replied as she headed towards Dusk's vehicle. How was your Thanksgiving, Dayton? Dusk inquired, attempting to be friendly as everyone got in the vehicle. It was pretty good, Dayton nodded. The only reason I'm not with the family now is because I hate Black Friday, but otherwise I can't complain. Yeah, unlike us, she's one of those lucky ones who actually has a good family, Don jeered, was it looking at Dayton. Geez, sorry, Dayton playfully teased back. I can't help but both your families are a piece of shit. I didn't realize you had bad parents too, Dusk. Which way to go? Don Dusk interrupted as she turned the vehicle on. Just go left for about nine miles and I'll tell you when to turn, Dayton said. Thanks, yeah, my parents aren't the best, Dusk admitted. I hate that they're, they hate that I'm pursuing a music career instead of doing a so-called real job. That's rough, Dayton sympathized. I can't personally relate, but Dawn's told me about how much a lot of it sucks to have her parents, so I know know how that must feel. Dawn's quite frankly didn't think, it, think she understand of how it felt to have her parents who didn't respect her, especially given the admission that she had great parents. Just like she did with Luna and Thorn, Dusk tried to suck it up and not be jealous, although it was kind of hard, 
thus tried to remind herself that she had to do the best that she could with the cards that she has dealt with. The soccer mom minivan was out in the middle of nowhere at this point, and the three were driving down a little dirt path in the woods, which of course turned down just moments ago from the main road. They were surrounded by groves of trees as they drove past. They were not in the house anywhere in sight. Dusk had been to, never been to this part of town, given that she had no real reason to ever be out in the middle of nowhere like this. It's just a little fervor. You might want to turn up right at the fork of the road, Dayton informed. Where are we? Is this place inhabitable? Dusk asked, considering the place to be out in the middle of the woods. Don't worry, it is, Dayton laughed. For a brief second, Dusk questioned what Dayton's definition of inhabitable was. But she quickly gained some faith and saw a huge patch of the open field, otherwise wooded area. As she continued driving, she was amazed to have an old house which was in the middle of the field. The house was majestic, standing there by its lonesome in such a huge field. The house's exterior looked very old, but in a way that felt historic rather than run down. The house had a brown side, side in the same color as the log cabin, which had the woodsy feeling to it. The windows were all different shapes, similar to the witch's house that they had visited in Salem. Quite frankly, the house didn't look to like to be haunted. Something about it was just eerie to dusk, and how it stood there, standing just to test time, yet looking naturally beautiful. This is the place, Dayton replied, as dusk turned off into the driveway and parked the vehicle. This is... I've never been anywhere this place before, dusk answered unable to find the right words to describe such a place. I know, right? Being in the middle of nowhere in the woods, away from the rest of the world, I felt like it would be a perfect place for us to talk about our writing, Dayton agreed. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Dawn asked Dusk. Dayton showed up me up here the other day, and I agree with her that this is a great place to get inspiration. Being so out of the way of everything really allows your free mind to, of all the crap you've been dealing with, yeah, this is incredible, Dusk said in awe. She had expected some little stack or shack or modest home, but this place was practically a piece of art. She loved being out in nature, so this would be a wholesome place to come and get some inspiration. Dusk would now look and see who was those Friday meetings were more than ever. I suppose, according to my aunt, this place is haunted. The house was owned by a by an heiress centric man named Jonathan Fresbano, who lived there with his wife Ivy. One day Ivy went out for a walk, but she never returned. Legend has it that Ivy's spirit eventually found her way home in death, and it still lingers around the place to protect her home, Dayton informed. Of course it's just a legend, so who knows if it's true. Whoa, Dust gasped. Regardless of what the legend was real or not, the story about being true made the place feel like a mystical energy to it which Dust felt found extremely cool. You guys want to see the inside? Dayton asked. Hell yeah, Dusk exclaimed. I didn't come out all the way out here to get a quick look. All right, Dayton said, pulling the key out of her pocket and unlocking the door. Inside the house just looked as beautiful as the place's exterior. The walls had wooden peeling paneling, and with each room was adorned with the furniture that looked like it was decades of old. A wooden kitchen table stood in front of the center of the dining room when they walked in, with some wooden chairs and padded seats along them. The kitchen had a pristine looking marble countertop, along with a fridge, microwave oven, coffee maker, and a large amount of cupboard space. The room had a small square window right above the kitchen sink, which gave the beautiful view of the woods. The living room was even more pretty and comfy with the tan looking couch with two red armchairs. A large picture window as centered in the room and a sliding screen door had led out to the patio where there were three elegant looking lawn chairs and the coffee table. It's a sin that this place gets unused most of the year, Dusk remarked. This is incredible. I agree. My aunt does not like the cold temperatures though, so she heads for Florida. Dayton informed. It's not even cold in here, Dawn disagreed. We're mostly in the 20s or and 30s. Yeah, you know old people, though. They get cold awfully easy, Dayton shrugged, as she continued leading the others around. Here's the upstairs, 
dusk ascended the stairs, which were made of hard wood. She did realize they were a tad uneven as she climbed them, but Dust didn't practically care, since it was no danger of giving them out. She expected the Muda's second level, but it was easily in the main floor was. A quick glance slow showed the three bedrooms and a bathroom, and a room that appeared to be an office. She peeked, she, she peeked inside each of the rooms and noticed that the beds were extremely cool, uh, old looking. Each had a rickety old wooden floorboards and a record player and a grandfather clock. And another room had filled with a pile of quilts and some clothes in a large plastic box. Each of the room was wood paneled and made the place even more old fashioned and cabin like. Lastly, Dust glanced in the office, which looked like it was perfect for writing sessions. A large wooden desk sat in the corner as well as two lamps and some various su office supplies. In addition to two tan rocking chairs, there was a group of folded up chairs in the corner. It would have been perfect for when the group met there as a whole. Dusk could hear the creaking of the floorboards and she walked up around the stairs level. She momentarily worried about perhaps the floorboards may not be stable, but she realized that after giving it another moment of thought, it might be a bit ridiculous. If there was any dangers of the floorboards giving out, Dayton's aunt would have replaced it. Something about this house was really grabbed Dusk. It was so out of touch of modern treads and out of the way of anything else. It almost felt like it was a part of a different universe than the rest of Oak Haven. Practically on the second floor of the house, a part of Dusk could feel a faint spiritual energy to it, as if a wandering spirit of ivy still lingered here. Dusk couldn't quite explain it, but there was an energy out of place that made them feel that they weren't alone here which was equally for bonding and intriguing. Do you guys want to hang out here for a little bit? Don asked. I've got a line of my songs I have been stuck on for a while. My family will be out shopping for at least a few more hours, so why not? Dayton shrugged. I've got nowhere to be. Ford and Luna are still with their family through Sunday, so my schedule is wide open, Dusk answered. As she sat in one of the tan rockers, upon closer inspection, the rockers were an old angle. One of the chairs was turned sideways to face the office chair, with it the other was facing straight. Dayton sat in the corner with it Dawn sat in the office chair by the desk. Hmm, that's odd, Dayton remarked. I could have sworn both of these rockers were lined up when I was here last. A part of Dusk immediately wondered if the ghosts had been there to move the chairs, as she broke the silence to ask Dayton what she needed help with. So what is the line? It's a song about my ex that I was talking about last week. I don't miss you, but I do know you want to kiss me, boo, is the lyric I got. I just can't get that sound too right. Anyway, I do write it sounds like it doesn't fit or so it's too long, Don laminated. What about I don't miss you, but you want to kiss too, Dayton said before backtracking. No, that's clunky. I don't want, I don't miss you, even though you don't even want to kiss you? Dusk then shook a shot, a shot in the dark. She had no idea if Dawn would like it, but given the slump that she had been lately, it properly sucked. Dawn's eyes lit up. That's perfect! You know you're a whiz at lyrics, Dusk. Thanks, Dusk beamed. Yeah, that was so good. You know you said you haven't been writing much lately, but you should really write more, Dayton encouraged. Yeah, you should tell Forn and Luna to stop dragging their feet with that music video, Dawn remarked. Maybe I do need to start writing more. Dawn nodded. Dusk nodded. She immediately didn't like the comment about Forn and Luna dragging their feet. Because that wasn't happening. She decided to shrug it off and she kept a lot of secrets about her process with the music video. So it made sense that Dayton and Dawn wouldn't understand. Besides they compliment her for writing, which was a much needed boost confidence for Dusk. Maybe perhaps her slump in writing the phenomenon was still inside of her somewhere. It was now beginning to get dark, and the girls were thinking of heading back for the evening. The sun was beginning to set for the day, showing the girls the full scale of its beauty. Dayton locked the door to her aunt's house. Before you leave, I just want to quickly show you guys something cool, Dayton exclaimed. As she led the girls around the back of the house, Dusk was the first to notice a small walking path leading to the woods. The sunset's really pretty on this trail. Do you guys want to take a quick walk? Sure, Don greeted. 
Then, yeah, that'd be great, Dusk replied. Hey, thanks for bringing us here, Dayton. I really need to unwind after my shit show of Thanksgiving celebration yesterday. This just gives me a burst of creativity. I needed to feel like my life wasn't leading to nowhere like my parents seemed to think. Of course. This place is way too wonderful to not be visited. I'm so glad to, I got you to come out here with someone, Dayton remarked. As the girls were walked by side by side on the walking path, Dusk felt a sense of peace and sincerity. Combined with a little spooky feeling that she felt inside the house. Although it was a little eerie, and honestly, it only made Dusk love it more. The otherworldly feel like this place was a perfect shape from the problems that she had her life had to offer. It was such a calm place that made Dusk think of similar, simpler times when she didn't have to worry about trying to make the band famous again or trying to think about where her life was going. The piece allowed her to drift back into the conversation she had with Vaughn and Luna last week about where they wanted to live. This is random, but what do you guys want to do when life looks in five years? Dusk asked as she daydreamed about her future. Where are you, a career counselor? Dayton joked. All this talk about Dawn's and I's parenting has, we're thinking about burnouts, and it honestly has me thinking. Personally, I love to live in a famous musician living in some big city, like Salem or New York, all soaking in the adventures of a big-ass city has to offer, Dusk clarified. Same, girl, Dawn nodded. I want to live in a penthouse apartment. Yeah, and I want to have all the luxuries that Oak Oval ha can't give us, Dayton dissed their, their town. Designer stores, cool restaurant events, actual fun things to do outside of taking a walk or going to some mom and pop store. It'd be so cool to be in a city where you can be in the center where everything's happening. I'd give everything for crowds and screaming my name and singing my lyrics. That would be cool, Don dreamed. I want it packed and all the sold out of stadiums and people listening to my music. It'd be cool to perform at some high class venue. Dayton remarked. Of course, Dusk could never share what she actually wanted to experience all the things Dawn and Dayton had just said, but she did try to force herself to remember the sadness was none of actually was real. It was just some dumb witch's spell. The penthouse apartments, big cities, and exciting new things to do and see admittedly did sound appealing to Dusk, and Oak Haven didn't offer any of them. It just worried her a tad bit that Forn and Luna didn't share their desires for those things. But perhaps at some point, the girls would be so involved in romantic relationships and live separately from another. Still, it was fun to daydream about the luxuries that she could have someday, if she could only strike it for big for real this time. The weekend had passed far too quickly. Saturday dusk had slept in again and had a relaxing morning to herself. She hung out with Dawn again and went to a movie at the feeder, about 30 minutes away from Oak Haven. Dustin practically enjoyed the movie, which was some cheesy remake of Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas that supposedly everybody was raving about. Dawn seemed to like it well enough, but Dust felt like two hours of her wanted two hours of her life back. After the movie, Dusk had returned home and spent the rest of the night on her own. Today, she had spent the day alone, and she decided to treat herself to a nice pancake breakfast, followed by a walk. For the rest of the afternoon, she took some time alone reading and watching TV. She practically didn't mind having to spend time to herself. The time out at Dayton's aunt's house had renovated her. Moreover, it was very nice to know that hearing through Dawn's stories, she wasn't alone of having crappy parents. She heard a knock at the door, which surprised her since nobody ever came out to the apartment unexpectedly. Dusk hurried over to open it, curious as to who it was, and as the door swung open, she saw it was foreign struggling to lug her suitcase up the stairs. I could get the door door for you, Dusk offered. Thanks, how was your Thanksgiving? Foreign inquired. Pretty decent, Dusk replied. She surprised herself by saying that, but if she were being honest, the horrid Thanksgiving meal she had with her family overshadowed by the excellent time she had with Dawn. Really? Foreign quirked an eyebrow. You were complaining nonstop before I left. I mean, my parents were really rough on me. My dad even told the family I was flipping burgers for a living while I dreamed about becoming the next pop star, Dusk said. Oh god, that's awful, Foreign sympathized. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, screw them, I guess, Dusk shrugged. 
I had a great time with my cousin Jax and Dawn and I. We spent the rest of the day together and Friday. That's great, Forn exclaimed. I'm glad that there was at least some two aspects of the weekend. I had a really good Thanksgiving, too. It was nice to have all my family to come to see us. We saw that new Grinch movie yesterday, too. So did I, and I thought it sucked, Dusk informed. I actually didn't mind it. The original would always be my favorite, but they did a really good job with the remake, Forn responded. Where did you see it? At the Hattie Theater at the 5 p.m. showing, Dusk replied. Same, although we were at the 10 a.m. showing. Crazy we both went to the same theater on the same day, though, Forn exclaimed, as another knock could be heard at the door. Luna, is that you? Dusk asked. Yeah, can you open the door? I kind of have my hands full, Luna replied. A voice was a bit strained. Forn promptly pulled the door handle and held the door for a roommate. Hey, welcome back. How was your Thanksgiving? It was amazing. It was so cool to get and travel out with my grandparents again, especially Aunt Grandma M, Luna said. We all had a big Thanksgiving dinner. We all played some board games and did some Black Friday shopping the next day. We also went to see a movie on Saturday. Was it The Grinch? Dusk asked. Yeah, how did you know? Luna perked up. We both saw it too, Forn laughed. <laughs> I love it. And I hated it, Dusk chimed in. I thought it was pretty good, actually. You can't beat the original, but Jim Carrey didn't do a bad job. The kids loved it, Luna reported. Anyway, how was your Thanksgivings? Mine was great, Forn reported. It was nice seeing my family again. We had a meal and did our normal tradition of watching a bunch of Christmas movies the day after, Forn informed. Dusk immediately was pretty jealous, while Forn and Luna reported about the incredible things they had done and wonderful traditions that they had celebrated with their beloved families. She had jumped at the first moment to get the fuck out of her family's house of hell. What about you, Dusk? Did your Thanksgiving go alright? Luna asked, sounding concerned and sympathetic. Surprisingly, it wasn't bad, Dusk said. Really? You mean your family didn't complain about your music career this time? Luna asked, sounding excited for Dusk. No, they did, Dusk corrected. Dusk said that her dad had told the family that she had spent her days daydreaming about being famous while sliding, slinging burgers, Foreign informed. Well, that's just mean, Luna shook her head in disgust. I'm really sorry, Dusk. Well, I realize I have just got to ignore the hateful asses. Dusk pretended that she didn't affect her, even though her family's remarks admittedly bothered her quite a bit. I enjoyed spending time with my cousin, and I got to hang out with Dawn, so that's what's pretty much important. I'm really glad you're realizing your worth, Luna smiled. You don't deserve to be treated like that. Yep, that's what I realize, Dusk curtly replied, wanting to be done with this conversation. Her conference was not carrying admittedly at the facade, as it was really bothered her with her that her parents were always so hard on her. Typically, she would rely on Luna and Foreign for moral support after a bad run with her parents, which she had admittedly had been doing some more and more in the recent months. However, now that she had Dawn, maybe she didn't feel like to open up to Foreign and Luna about this anymore. They didn't understand how awful and demeaning it was to felt to have your parents rail on you constantly, for your career choice. But Dawn understood exactly how it felt. She didn't practically believe in the cosmetic hippy dippy things for a reason. Stuff that Forn and Luna did. But she was starting to believe that Dawn was in her life for a reason. Finally she had someone who understood what it's like to have parents that weren't proud of her. If she ever had problems with her parents, she would just share what happened with Dawn. She could be sympathized with Dusk's problems the way better than Forn and Luna could given that they were so beloved by their families. However, a part of Dusk said wasn't a lie. Beyond the Thanksgiving dinner itself, this was probably one of the best weekends she had in a while. She had so much fun hanging out with Dayton and Dawn, walking with Jacelyn, and just going to be on the movie with Dawn was pretty fun. Despite that the movie sucked, the best part of the weekend was the inspiration of that being at Dayton's aunt's house that brought her. Being in nature, away from all the troubles, and all the world had given her was so peaceful filled her up with so much confidence that it made her feel that she could get out of this ride and slump that she had been. And that was the creative enough to make the Hex Girls famous again. Dusk had a feeling that she would never forget 
What a great weekend this was.